Welcome to our recorded service for Care Home Residents for January 2021 and a big Happy New Year from all of us here at Liberton Kirk. We're hoping to be back with you in person later on this year, but for now we need to stay away to keep everybody safe. In the meantime, we recorded our worship for you to share. I'll just introduce the people here today. My name is Fiona and I'm a lay preacher in the Church of Scotland. We're also lucky enough to have Willie on the keyboard and we've got Isla who are going to help with the singing today as well as using some recorded music. So let's begin our worship by listening to that great hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Let's turn to God in prayer. God, our loving creator, thank you for this opportunity to focus our minds on you at the beginning of this new year. Although the nights are dark and the weather is poor and it's easy to be despondent, give us the hope of spring, the hope of good things to come. Help us to face the future with confidence despite our aches and pains and the problems that can drag us down. Give us the faith that all times are in your hand and that you have a plan for us that extends beyond the present moment and that you want good things for us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's listen now as Isla and Willie lead us in that lovely hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Privilege to carry 
their trouble anywhere. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrow share? Our Bible reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, and the heading is The Calling of Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Amen. I wonder if you've ever had a surprise in life. Maybe you've won a raffle or managed to get a job you didn't expect to get or something else happened that was really unexpected. Whatever it was, I hope it was a good surprise, not a nasty one. In our Bible story today, Matthew is telling us about his big surprise in life, the story of how he met Jesus. Matthew was a tax collector which meant that everybody hated him. Tax collectors were notorious for being corrupt and for taking bribes and collecting more than they should to line their own pockets, often using violence to get it. The poor people hated him because they bled, he bled them dry. The Jews hated him because he was hand in hand with the despised Roman oppressors. His family had probably disowned him and cut him off. The only people who probably liked him were his fellow tax collectors, and he wasn't too sure if he liked them. He was probably pretty fed up with life, and on this particular day, he was just sitting in his little booth, waiting for people to come and hand over their taxes, when Jesus came walking by, and then something really unexpected happened. Jesus actually stops and speaks to him, saying, follow me and be my disciple. And Matthew probably couldn't believe his ears. He was probably going, who? Me? And looking around to see who else Jesus was really talking to. This good man, Jesus, that everybody wanted to meet was talking to him. Jesus wanted him. So he gets up and goes with him and spends the day talking to him and even sits down to dinner with him and his friends and disciples. That wasn't what he thought was going to happen when he got out of bed that morning. But not, not everybody's happy. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, ask Jesus, why do you want to have anything to do with people like that? To them, Matthew and the other tax collectors were just like dirt, not worth bothering about. But Jesus reminds them that everyone is of value to God, even those who think God couldn't possibly be interested in them. 
Now, I hope that nobody here is as bad a sinner as Matthew, but I wonder if we think that we are too ordinary or too insignificant for God to bother with us. God calls us all to follow him, but often we miss it because we don't expect it. Have we ever felt the pull of our heart towards the goodness of God? Are we prepared to pay attention and be surprised by God's call? I don't know if any of you are football fans. My husband certainly is. And if you are a football fan, you'll know that often a team can get really dispirited if they're being defeated by the other side. And when they do, their heads go down. And when that happens, they can't even see the opportunities that come along and that they miss really easily. I wonder if you recognise that scene. We're at the beginning of a new year, but maybe it just feels to us like the old one so far. If we don't look out for surprises, we won't see them when they come along. Jesus tells us that he brings new life and asks us to live in hope, expecting good things. He even, he even tells us to ask for them. He says to his followers, if your children ask you for something to eat, you don't give them a rock or a stone or something that will harm them. So if you people who are sinful give good gifts to your children, how much more will the good God give good things to his children? And he does this out of the great love he has for us all, even people like Matthew who felt so unworthy. What would you like to ask God for today? And let's think about this as Isla and Willie lead us in the hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
Let's turn to God and ask him for good things in our prayers for others, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Generous God, who wants to give us all good things, we ask for your blessings on us in this new year. Teach us to live hopefully with a sense of gratitude for all the good things you have given us, a comfortable and safe place to live, and people to care for us and look after us. Give us a gift of faith, no matter what the new year brings, secure in the knowledge that although the world changes, you are always the same. We ask for your good gifts for the people in our world who are struggling with life, maybe with poverty or illness or fear of what the future may bring. Teach us always to be aware of the needs of others and to help where we can. We pray for those around us who have their own concerns for themselves and their families. We pray for the people who work in our care homes and their families as they struggle to cope with the risks of the coronavirus. Keep them safe as they go about their daily routines. We remember those we love who have passed on, who are now worshipping with you in glory. We have the faith that death is not the end and that there are good things to come. Lord, hear all our prayers as we join together to say the Lord's Prayer using whatever version we feel most comfortable with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is a very famous one, which I'm sure you'll know. It was written by a man called John Newton, who was a slave trader in the 18th century. And just like Matthew, he answered the call of Jesus one day and his life was changed beyond his expectations. And of course, the hymn is Amazing Grace.
Thank you for joining us for our worship today. And we'll bow our heads and ask for God's blessing to finish with. Lord Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. May the blessings of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and all whom we love every day in the coming new year as he was with us in the old. Amen. <laughs>